So number one, understand. Half of the dysphoreous fractures have an articular component, and the pattern of articular uh, <clears throat> fragmentation is different. There are two basic patterns, a narrow and a wide postermedial fragment, depending on whether the fragment comes out distal, I'm sorry, radial or ulnar, to the dorsal radiocarpal ligament. Keep this in mind, it's very important during uh, fracture treatment. The um, <clears throat> structure of the distal radius, two well-formed uh, columns of metaphyseal bone to support the scaphoid fossa, only one on the lunate side, and that is because the forces, the, lo the, um, the physiological loads are applied all the way palmarly on the lunate fossa. We must keep this in mind because as a fracture occurs, the palmar lunate fragment is the most difficult one to stabilize as it is offset. We must indicate correctly our treatment. Conservative treatment is a mainstay of distal radius fixation, of this distal radius treatment. Uh, the elderly patients tolerate a significant amount of deformity, but there is a limit of how much deformity they're willing to tolerate. And young people certainly do not tolerate a lot of uh, deformity. So these are the ones that we must indicate for our surgical procedures in order to give them the results that we want them to get and that they want. But let's not forget the elderly patients. They also benefit from rigid internal fixation and, uh, and anatomical reduction if that allows them to return to the activities of daily living earlier. Go distal. So you know I'm all about the volar approach. It is my favorite approach. And if you're going uh, volar, you must go all the way distal. You must cross the flexion creases. You must release the tendon of the uh, flexor carpi radialis all the way to the ridge on the trapezium. And that gives you an extra inch of distal uh, release that allows you to mobilize the median nerve and the flexor tendons all the way orally without undue tension. And you can get to the vulvar marginal fragment very easily from the radial side. No, no need to do a separate incision for the volar lunate fragment. It's important to understand and know the, uh, the anatomy. Uh, the uh, watershed line is a key uh, landmark. We, uh, it is identified by palpation by feeling that prominent volar rim of the lunate fossa. The brachioradialis uh, is also another landmark. We must release the intramuscular septum lateral to the brachioradialis to be able to expose the radial aspect of the, of the uh, uh, wrist. That will allow us to see our first compartment, protect our radial. It allows us to, to opening up the compartment, allows us to put our finger with the tip of the uh, styloid uh, fragment, reduce it, go to the other side. Important. So when we are doing uh, volar fixation, many of these fractures require you to get to the dorsal aspect. Rather than doing a separate incision, uh, try pronating the proximal fragment out of the way. This has been like the center point of my effort through the years is conv convincing surgeons to do this. And fortunately, more surgeons have learned that this is the key to easy anatomic reduction and quick effective surgery. Uh, that allows us to remove the organized hematoma to uh, get real length, volar tilt. It also allows us to manage some articular fractures that might seem impossible to treat from a volar approach. <clears throat> Learning how to reduce uh, the fractures is key because in the end, it's all about indirect means. It's all about traction, it's all about pushing the dorsal fragments against the already applied plate with a little traction on the fingers. Use your other hand as a reduction instrument. Push those fragments against the plate that will act as a reduction template. And that's a very important key to uh, res uh, good results in these cases. Do not commit to your first one. That's very important because I never get the plate in the right position or the reduction right the first time. That's why now I prefer to put K wires through the plate and that allows me to tweak my reduction. If I don't get it right the first time, I can keep on tweaking my reduction, but not marrying the big holes 
that you make for your screws and therefore limit your possibilities. Even coming with your fractures, you can put as many fixed angle K wires through sleeves <coughs> in your drill guides and get away with it very easily. You must look at your reduction from every corner. The first thing you do is fix the central column, it's the keystone, but make sure that your screw is gonna come up the very dorsal ulnar corner of the central column. Then you can reduce your radial uh, styloid fragment or scaphoid fossa fragment into place and try to get that screw out the tip of the styloid. Important is not to be in the distal radial joint and it is important to make sure in the end that your screws are not too long. And that's where the extended tangential view comes in handy. Developed by uh, Pat Owens, simply flex the elbow using your hand table, place your mini fluoro over the table and shoot your X-ray and you get an excellent axial uh, view of your radius. You must create a good support structure. This is not about interfragmentary uh, lag screw fixation. This is about simply creating a scaffold that supports your articular surface in space. And you must avoid the pitfalls of volar fixation, which include injury to the extensor uh, uh, structures, the extensor tendons, uh, if your uh, screws are too long. So make sure they are not. And <clears throat> there's nothing worse than putting a screw into the extensor compartments. There's no space for anything else up there. Now on the volar aspect of the radius, you can even do more harm if your plate is not flat on the bone surface because the flexor tendons by rubbing against the metallic plate might rupture. And that really is very difficult to reconstruct. That's a real disservice to our patients. So we must avoid that at all costs. Don't forget the volar marginal fragment. That is the Achilles heel of distal radius fixation. Even if you think you did a great job, it can still come back and bite you because this fragment is often avascular. And if you do not, do not fix it rigidly, it will reabsorb instead of healing back into place. And finally, yes, you must always have a plan B. You must know all the tricks. You must also know how to use distal fragment first technique, which is important for the very inveterate fracture for the nascent of unions. It allows you to basically lever your reduction back into place, you apply the plate to the distal fragment first, and then you bring your plate down to the radial shaft, get restoring volar tilt. Uh, other forms of fixation, like fragment specific, you should know how to use it when necessary. And never forget that new but very useful instrument, the bridge plate, that will help you when nothing else can. There's no distal radius to fix in these cases. You must manage many problems, including soft tissue compartment syndrome, but in the end, the bridge plate will hold your hand at two length and give you the opportunity of coming back another day for a great success. Thank you very much.